Okay, so I have been teaching virtually for um, since I started at Tulane International Academy over a year ago. And during my virtual teaching adventure, I tumbled upon Nearpod and I have been using it ever since. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you some features that I use with Nearpod and some examples from my own lesson. So let's get started. Nearpod is free and it is easy to use. That's why I like it. It also has other really interesting features uh, that can be integrated into one presentation that you can present seamlessly from the end to the from the beginning to the end. And the students can interact with the slides and with you. Um, after you create a free account, you will see a screen like this. And you can search for some ready-made lessons that are available through their library, or you can create your own lesson from scratch. And this is what I often do. After you click create, this is uh, what you're gonna see. You're gonna see a screen like this and you can upload uh, your ready-made slides from PowerPoint or a PDF document and Nearpod will create individual slides for you from the document and then you can add other features. Now, if you add a new slide, you can click on this button here and these are the options that you have. You can create a slide as we understand it or you can embed a video and you can integrate other contents here as well. I haven't used all of these features, so I'm gonna show you how to embed a video and why I like it better than showing uh, the video on YouTube. You also have the option of choosing one of these features um, when you create a new slide. You can add an open-ended question, you can add matching pairs, a quiz, you can add the joy feature, which I'm gonna explain later. You can add a collaborate board, which allows students to contribute ideas in different kind of post-it notes on your screen. Um, you can also add a fill in the blanks uh, exercise that I'm gonna talk about later as well. Okay, so to add a video it is very easy. You can choose a video from their library, or you can choose a video on YouTube, which has millions of videos, I assume. Um, and what you have to do is to put a search a term or search phrase here. And when uh, a list of videos show up, then you just uh, click on a video and that's it. And here you can see that I put in a long phrase here, but it is because I created a video using Google Earth uh, to take students uh, on a tour to the city of Pittsburgh. So uh, after I click on this video and save it, voila, this is what you see and this is what the students see. Uh, you can play the video on your full screen like this so that the students can see on your screen if you share it, or you can allow students to play the video individually on their own device. And this is a great option when uh, the internet uh, bandwidth may not be great and they may be lacking. Um, but maybe you can make sure that the students start the video at the same time so that the class is in sync with one another. Um, so this feature is called matching pairs and I use it when I want to check whether students understand new concepts that have been covered or new words that have been taught to, to them in class. So basically uh, you create pairs like this uh, by clicking on this button and you type the two items side by side uh, with each other. And um, this is an example uh, from my college class. Uh, we uh, took a course that has the content in psychology and we also listened to a lot of research presentations. So I wanted to see if the students remember some key concepts uh, in psychology and also concepts in understanding a research presentation. So I created this exercise for them. And this is what they see. Uh, they see different terms and different definitions here and they have to move these around so that they can match them into pairs. To add an open-ended question is easy as well. And this is uh, what you see on your screen as you add an open-ended question. You just type your question here and you have the option of 
uh, adding a, a video or adding a picture or adding uh, an audio uh, as well. And this is what the students see. Uh, you can see that I like this better because the students have a bigger space to type into instead of a small chat, a chat box if you use Zoom and you use the chat function. And I also um, find that the students are more engaged uh, this way. They actually, I feel like they feel more responsible to provide me with an answer uh, uh, through this feature rather than an answer in the chat. You can also add a quiz if you give a long presentation or if the students have read something or if the students have listened to a video and you want to check uh, their understanding, their comprehension, or when you want to check their uh, language, then you can create a quiz. And it's uh, very simple. These are multiple choice items and you have the question spam here and you can add as many options as you want here. Now, Nearpod allows you to turn the quiz into a game. How exciting, students love games. And uh, this is really a gamified activity because it's an educational activity, but it has some uh, game elements. So you can see here, there's, uh, you can choose a Halloween theme, uh, there's music, there are avatars for students to choose from, there are points, there is a leaderboard and you can see who is winning. Uh, there's competition because students do it together in real time and there's a time limit and there's feedback. Students know when they are right and when they are wrong. Uh, so once in a while you may want to do this to kind of energize the students and um, if you have more than five questions that may be a good option. If you only have less than five questions maybe it, it is not as exciting as when there are more questions. Um, this is a screen that students see after you create uh, a fill in the planks exercise. And it, again, it's very simple to create. You can type uh, a, a text, some text here onto the screen, and then you click on the words that you want to take out. Uh, or you can copy and paste uh, a, a text from, um, that you already have and take out some words as well. Again, I like to do this to check whether the students have understood what they just learned from my presentation or from a video. And I often put a summary here and uh, I take out some words. And this can be content focused because you may wanna see if the students remember some key information like a year like this, or it can be language focused because now they have to process language, vocabulary, grammar, if they want to do the exercise uh, accurately. Moving on, I'm going to talk about the last feature that I really like here. It is called Draw It. So basically, after you add it, this is what the students see. This is their screen. And they have the option of drawing someone something with a pen. Uh, they can use a highlighter. They can type some text, or they can upload a picture. I find that this is an easy way for students to share a picture with you because in a big class, when you teach virtually, it may dif be difficult for our students to uh, share their screen one at a time. So this is a way for you maybe to ask them to share a picture very easily. But it is also a, a way for you to ask them to draw, to illustrate something, and it may create some fun and interactive moments in the classroom. And this is what you see. So as the students start drawing, you're going to see uh, their images or their drawings uh, here. And when they submitted it, you will see that they have submitted it as well. So in this activity, I asked uh, the students to draw a picture to illustrate a new word that they just learned and let uh, the classmates uh, guess what it is. And, um, and you can see that there are some funny pictures here. And after the students have submitted the pictures, you can choose to share the picture with the whole class. And again, they can see it on their screen without you sharing, sharing your screen. And then um, you can create some interactive activities here. Students like it in my class. After you have all the slides, after you have added all the features that you want, uh, this is what you see. This is your final product. Um, you can still move the slides around. Uh, 
but this is what you see and you can save it and then you can start your lesson. Uh, you have the options of presenting uh, it live so that the participants participate uh, with you in real time and you will see their names and then you can check their work in progress or you can send a stu uh, the students a link so that they can go through the lesson in their own time. But again, you can still check the work that you ask them uh, to input into the uh, lesson. So those are the features that I would like to share today and I encourage you to try it. You may like it. Thank you so much. I hope that you have found the presentation helpful.